Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we have another couple of games with commanders from the new set, Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. And as a special guest, today we receive Josh from Elder Drunken Highlander, an awesome YouTube channel where you can find very janky deck decks for all your darling needs. You can find the links in the top right cards and in the description below. This week Rodrigo brought a, uh, well, interesting Nalia the Arnis, a list built around a gimmick you'll soon see. Josh brought a Wilson Refined Grizzly with Scion of Alistar as a background, an Ad Nauseam and Hermit Druid deck focused on winning through Shane of Smog. Diogo is on a Protein Hulk list with Sivris Nightmare Speaker at the helm, backed by a Master Chef. And Baal is on a Jan Jansen Clock of Omens combo deck. Rodrigo is going first, and he mulliganed down to 6, not wanting to go lower, keeping a Windswap Teeth, Caves of Skylos and Agadim's Awakening for lands. Charcoal Diamond and Dark Ritual for ramp, and a single Shadowborn Apostle, that's right, this is a spicy Apostle deck, he sent a Plains to the bottom. Josh kept his first 7 and it's quite a strong hand, with a Bayou, Urborg, Tomb of Yogmoth and Takenuma, Abandoned Mire for lands. Elves of Deep Shadow and Dark Ritual for ramp, already having Witherbloom Apprentice as a combo piece, so that Imperial Seal might have a target in sight already. Diogo Mulligan once and kept a Swamp, Nurturing Pitland and Misty Rainforest for lands. Deathrite Shaman for ramp and Putrid Goblin helps in some Apatra lines, within the 98. Necromancy for Entombed Hulks or Mirror Value and Vampiric Tutor to pivot his game plan. Lastly, Balmulligan once as well and found a Badlands and Spire of Industry for lands. Mana Crypt and Soul Ring for ramp with Ashnod's Transmogrant to transform Jen into an artifact to combo with the clock. Grand Abolisher for protection and Grim Hireling for some ramp and can help clear some hate bears out of the way. Ready for the match? Rodrigo starts the game by playing a Windswap Teeth and cracking it to find a Scrubland. With that, he casts a Dark Ritual in order to cast a Charcoal Diamond, and with the last floating mana, he casts a Shadowborn Apostle. Too much surprise from the table. Josh draws for the turn, plays a Bayou, and passes without even casting his Dark, as he just found a Vampiric Tutor. Duke plays a Nurturing Pitland and casts a Deathrite Shaman, passing the turn. Bal plays a Badlands and casts a Mana Crypt. He follows it with a Soul Ring and then casts a Grim Hireling, ending his turn. Rodrigo finds a second line in a row, so he plays a Caves of Koilos and casts his commander Nalia the Arnis to hopefully start casting Apostles from the top of his library. In the end step, Josh casts his Vampiric Tutor and searches for a Chain of Smog before getting to his turn. He plays an Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth and casts a Dark Ritual. Players expect Ad Nauseam, but he rather casts a Witherbloom Apprentice, and after that he casts the Shane of Smog, targeting himself. With no free removal from any opponent, he manages to win the game, by copying Shane of Smog on himself each time, therefore triggering Magecraft from the Witherbloom Apprentice, draining his opponents to death. GG. With his turn 2 victory, we decided to play another one. This time, Rodrigo still managed to win the dice roll, and he's going first. He kept his first 7 with the Windsor Teeth and Marsh Flats for lands. Zulaport Cutthroat is an outlet to win the game, and 4 Apostles means he only needs to find 2 more by naturally drawing them or casting them from the top with Nalia. Josh kept his first 7 again, with a single Lenore Waste for lands, but with an Elves from the same Waste and a Mana Vault, both to ramp to an early Ad Nauseam. Finale of Devastation can help find Witherbloom, and Sensei Stop can help smooth out his draws. Nox's Revival can be great interaction or recursion if he fails to go for it. Diogo also kept his first 7, with a Bloodstained Mire and Underworld Stadium for lands. Birds of Paradise for ramp, and then Green Sun Zenith, Eldritch Evolution, and Court of Calling can all help find a Patra or other combo pieces in this creature centric deck, calling the weak for some extra mana. Ball followed the trend of first 7s, with a Command Tower, Spire of Industry, and Flooded Strand for lands. Ashnod's Transmogrant found its way back again, so with Vampiric Tutor and Demonic Tutor he can find Clock of Omens and an Outlet, to hopefully go for it with Revelant Silence for protection. Ready for round 2? Rodrigo starts the game with a Windswept Teeth and cracks it for a Scrubland. Similar to last game, he casts a Shadowborn Apostle and passes. Josh plays a Lenore Wastes and their Elves as well. Diogo plays a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it for a Bayou to cast a Birds of Paradise, also passing. Bal plays his Calling Tarn and cracks it for a Badlands, casting his Ashnaut's Transmorgant, ending his turn. Rodrigo plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for an untapped Godless Shrine. He follows it with two Shadowborn Apostles, hoping to draw into two more next turn and go for it. Josh plays an Urborg Tomb of Yogmoth and then casts his commander, Wilson Refined Grizzly, as he plans to soon go for an Owls. He still casts a Mana Vault and passes. Diogo plays an Undergrowth Stadium and then casts a Green Sun Zenith, X equals 2, and searches for a Patra Vizier of Poisons, ending his turn. Baltop decks a Mana Crypt, so he plays a Flooded Strand and cracks it for a Plateau and then casts the Crypt, to use it to cast his Demonic Tutor, 
searching for a reckless fire weaver, which he also casts, as it has plenty of toughness to withstand two turn cycles from a patra and try to win after it. We're back to Rodrigo's turn. He keeps drawing lands. He plays a marshlands and is forced to cast Nalia, hoping to find other apostles to go for the win. Josh casts his turn and casts a Sensei's Divining Top, and passes the turn while everyone is distracted from those 5 open mana. Diogo draws, plays a Dark Borth pathway and goes to combat, attacking Josh with a Patra, expecting to kill one of the Apostles, and actually going for an Eldritch Evolution win in the second main phase. However, Josh does block, as he hopes to eat a juicy Nos. In his second main phase, Diogo sadly casts Master Chef and passes. Balan taps and rolls for the Crypt, losing it. He plays a Command Tower and ponders about leaving Interaction and Vampiric Tutor up, but he then casts his commander, Jan Jensen, Chaos Crafter, and passes the turn. Rodrigo draws yet another land, and his top deck is not an Apostle, so now he cracks his fetch to find a Plains, in hopes to hit another Apostle on top, but it is not. He plays Castle Lockthwain and simply passes. On his end step though, Josh's plans come to fruition. He activates his top to draw a card and then casts an Ad Nauseam. He starts revealing several cards and doing some math at the same time, as he will be slightly short on mana next turn without the Vault. He ends up stopping at a considerably low life before going to his turn. He draws and takes one from the Vault. He plays a Blooming Marsh and then casts Cabal Ritual for 3 black mana. He then casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing his Elves as an additional cost. He now casts a Green Sun Zenith X equals 2 and searches for Witherbloom Apprentice to play. He follows it with a Demonic Tutor, searching for a Chain of Smog that he casts on himself and steals yet another game. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match everyone. These were some short matches as we didn't have time to play more, but we will eventually bring you these and other commanders again to better showcase their power. Witherbloom Apprentice and Chain of Smog proved to be a powerful combo if pulled out early, especially against a table light on interaction. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Dragon House Cat, V, RJ, Hita Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragon Steak, Katerina, Michael Bowen, Super Scaldi, Dog, Wyatt, Wicked, and Zinan, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!